top G in a Bugatti mm. We are tipping at the party Cobra girl like tell me say she want me Testicles 1, 2, 3 Testicles 1, 2, 3 We're live, welcome back to Confit Pathways TV So guys We've got questions from the public. I'll read out the questions and you can pass the mic around. Everyone has their own answer. First question, what area did all of you grow up in? Joe. Joe. Campsie. I grew up in Millwood. I grew up in Hurstville. Oh shit, man, was that DMX <laughs> <laughs> Oh yo, I grew up in Bedford. <laughs> no, I grew up in Hurstville, so, but I remember this motherfucker in the back. <laughs> and I grew up in uh, Miller Busby. Who's going to be winning a big test between the whole team at the moment? 100% Andrew. Not me, bro. Drew? I, I'm putting my, I put my money on fucking, <laughs> on Musty, to be honest, bro. Fuck, Andrew's been humbled. Humbled, bro. Yeah, I got humbled that day, bro. Right, right, two months ago, I had in the bag. So you're all right, bro. Hey, right, dogs or cats? Oh, dogs, 100%. Dogs. 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 What's up, my boy Simba? Dogs. <laughs> Do you still keep in touch with What's the dogs? boys you did time with? Um, I still do, yeah, I still see them every couple of months. Still talk to them, still train with them, talk to them here and there. Yeah, I do, a couple of them. You yeah, guys? I was going to go visit someone the other day. Um, you know, you never forget the ones that have always been there for you. Uh, yes, that's a yes for me. Okay, yeah, I still talk to, I still talk to the boys at the time with, still get calls from the boys in jail and I say yes. What's the hardest thing about leaving the life? Probably the boys that you did time with and they're like, you know, obviously still up in the same shit, so you obviously just gotta choose a different path to apply. Um, hardest thing for leaving life is probably getting used to, like, so when you go from making a lot of money to a little bit of money, it's, it's a bit of a rude shock. Hardest thing probably about leaving the life is actually the fear of actually falling back into it. So just um, try to keep on the straight and narrow. Hardest thing for me was transitioning from one thing that I knew to, to something gamer. completely different. <laughs> hardest thing about leaving the life was you know what, to watch all your mates still do it and you can't, you don't want to, the chances of lose, doing more time. Is there a church inside jail and did you guys pray? Alhamdulillah, yes. Yes, 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 yes. yes, yes. Yep. I prayed when the boys prayed, eh? Uh, you know, I used to, in my first two years, I prayed every single day until I got sentenced. Yes, I did. And uh, matter of fact, we've got Reverend Brown in the back here. <laughs> Can I get a hallelujah? <laughs> What is one value slash life lesson that Jao taught you? Everything happens for a reason and you might not know the wisdom behind it but you just got to stay patient and you got to know that everything happens for a reason. Uh, for me it's um, to really appreciate and value like your loved ones and family that come to visit you because you know um, going through all that shit you obviously don't value them when you're on the outside you're more worried about making money and hanging out with your boys and shit but they're the only ones that you know come and support you while you're going through tough times. I've actually got two. Um, the first one is that you only worry about things that you can influence, touch. That's a challenge to you. And you don't worry about things that you can't. It makes life so much easier. And the second one is... Fuck, I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> the second one is um, the art of staying present. That's what Joe taught me, how to stay present a lot. Everyone tries to avoid hard times. But when I was in prison, hardest times, um, not physically but more, more so mentally, but you know those were the times that I grew the most, so I actually seek uh, hardship. For myself, I'd probably say one value taught me was to apply training to life. When it gets hard, you just keep pushing, no matter what. Did you guys ever get bitter about people not visiting you? Yeah, for me, I reckon, um, I'm not bitter. Just you, know, you sort of wonder where everyone went when you're always with them, but I guess they have their, their reasons. So, yeah. I wouldn't say bitter, just to make you upset or so. Nah, not me. I was really a fan of visits, to be honest. I never, I didn't like having much of them, so I don't really, really, really mind. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's bitter in Hamilton for never visiting. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I thought the visit, yes. I never got bitter, but you question, you question them, you really understand who your true friends are, were uh, action stick. Uh, actions speak louder than words, right? Yeah. How many cracks did you guys get into inside? I only think I only got into two. Two or three? Two or three. Yous? A couple. What's that one? Yeah, I can't, can't remember. A favorite jail meal to cook? Caramel slice. Oh, yeah. That's not a meal. Yeah, it is. Nah. <laughs> I'll have that for dinner, bro. Prison cheesecake. Prison. Oh, yeah, that's not bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My favorite was for breakfast, uh, oats and a can of tuna. What 
would a day in jail look like? Fuck, it's the same shit every day. Every jail is a little bit different, depending on which jail you're at. But pretty much you get let go about like what's eight o'clock, roughly eight o'clock, seven to nine something roughly. Out in the yard, this is maximum security, but you're out in the yard for six I don't know hours. six hours, about roughly about six hours. Then you get locked into your cell, and that's it. That's your fucking day. What you do in between is up to you. Alright boys, that's a wrap. Anyways guys, please um like, subscribe, comment, turn on your notifications guys, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. <laughs> Thanks guys. No Feels like we're back at jail. I'm Joe Selly tonight, guys. And I'm back on the program, guys. <laughs> TV program, guys. <laughs> Fuck me dead. Spewing. Where are we going, Joe? Ah, guys, we're going to the gym this morning. And I think Hammy's had his fourth shower since we've been here. That is the main You have another shower, lad? I did have a shower. <laughs> <laughs> That's what tits. Ass all day, brother. I just like to see that shit jiggle, baby. Hot or innocent? Innocent. A hundred mil, you either do a bank robbery or one drug deal. You got 10 Kauis to split the hundred mil between. But on the bank robbery, five of your boys go down, but no one snitches. Or on the drug deal, the importation, only one bloke dies, two, two of your people go down, no one snitches. But one dies. Nah, the bank robbery. Bank robbery? Oh, no, I'm dying. Yeah, ah. Uh, Saying down. no Five. to crime, no to crime. <laughs> Ass or titties, bro? Ass or titties? I, I go for the tass, man. You know what tass means? That's titties and ass, baby. Hot or innocent? Oh, bro, I'll go with innocent ones, man. You got, you got 10 curries. Both jobs make 100 mil. You're guaranteed not to get done. The bank robbery, 100 mil. Nine of your curries go down, 10 years plus. The drug deal, one of your curries dies, two of them, two of them get done. No one snitches, but I'll probably go to the bank probably. I'll look after the boys if they get locked up. Ass or tits, bro? Huh? Ass or tits? Neither. Depends on the quality of the woman. Oh. What's <laughs> Ass or tits? Ass or day. Thought or innocent? Thought or nah, innocent? Innies making my thought. Unbelievable. Haram, haram, haram. Two jobs. 100 mil jobs each. No, I'm not choosing either, man. Fuck. Um, you have to choose so one. Either, right, I'd rather yeah, not have yeah, a loser no, brother. You know, no, you're not dying on your life. Uh, oh yeah, you know I'm dying on your, on your decision. Nah, nah. Got a runner, guys. We made it. Day one. Just so you know, guys, we're in the middle of Dubbo. Guys, just a bunch of ex-cons today. Paying to go back inside a jail, a load of garbage. Fuck it. That's Shay. That's Shay. What are you doing there, Ank? Yeah. Yeah. Segro. Segro. In the dark. Oh, the hole. Andrew, you know how I know your uncle was here? Yeah, yeah how? <laughs> this ninja starts. <laughs> your great ancestors are locked up here. What? what? That's Shay. Prison break? Who Fuck a knife. Who's that? How far have we come from back then to now? Can't in jail with all that. <laughs> Can you demonstrate that, please? Do it, do it. This one, this one. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to Pathways TV. <laughs> Do we have a good time today, boys? We had a mad time with the boys, eh? Joe, what's your favorite part of today? Who's your favorite bloke? Few people tune in, but uh, I like little Chris who joined us halfway through. He just came in halfway through the sentence, but he really adopted the the program. And like, you know, we were talking about self worth, self belief. Like, he was really listening, chilling, and he loved the boxing. He gave everything, absolutely fucked him up. The guy that stood out to me the most was Cohen. Because he pulled me up on the side, he goes, Hey bro, um, I'm really going through a lot of shit in regards to my mental health. But he goes, I love the G code 
And he goes, I've got a bad memory. Can you write it down for me so I can, I can look at it every day? So I wrote down the principles of the G code about, you know, gratitude being grounded in a goal setting. And I told him a little blurb about all of it and what it means. And he actually like sat next to me and like you could tell he was really into it. He wanted to learn more about it. And he, look, he, he, had a, he was carrying a lot of injuries and he couldn't get involved with much of the training. But I know that he was, when we were talking about the mindset stuff, he was on his own team. You can tell fucking they, they didn't have much programs. He was saying, you know, they need more programs like us to come up. He goes, can you guys come up more often? Like I said, as, as much as we want to come up more often, you know, we can't be at all places at all times. You know, our vision is to be able to expand what we do with our program all over regional and have autonomous teams in, you know, all the regional towns. But, you know, it's the thing about what we do, it's really hard to find the mentors, the right type of mentors. We're, we're a dumb in a dozen, you know. We, we, we've got a very small pool of individuals to, that we can choose from. Someone who's in jail, someone who is into fitness, someone who actually knows how to talk and can be a mentor. Right, and you know, finding the right type of mentors is one of the most difficult challenges that we're facing at the moment. So, whoever's watching this, if you feel that you know you could be a part of the team, please hit us up. We're more than happy to bring bring good people onto our team. How'd you feel on the regional first um, regional job? Yeah, bro, it was good. I um, enjoyed talking to the boys. Matt. I'll talk from a challenge a challenge perspective. I reckon one thing that challenged me a bit talking to those boys. You know, like, I don't know what it's like to live out in the bush. In terms of asking them, you know, what do they aspire? Or, like, what do they want to do for work when they get out? Like, talking to them, like, the common denominator is there's not much for them out here. Yeah. They don't got much option. It's, it's a bit hard, I reckon. That's one thing I, probably, I found challenging. Even if we don't help them on this one go, it's generated, like, a spark in their mind, you know. The next time they do come back to jail, like, nah, fuck. They've already started thinking about the way we think, <laughs> and they're, they're trying to break free. Yeah. For me... The main thing is that like when we're in Sydney, you know, it normally takes a couple of sessions with the boys to start bonding. And I really appreciate when we come to country, you know, halfway through the day, we're already bonding and by the end of the first day, it's like we've known them for weeks, you know? Yeah. And I think that's the pleasure that we get for coming out with these boys out here. And like just leaving them after a two day program, an intense program, I feel like I've been with them and known them for ages, you know? Anyways, guys, we're off the Wagga Wagga Riverina. Yeah, another two days we'll give you an update on when we get there and how, how well we go with the lads up there. Well, yeah, so guys, just so you know, we all drew out of a hat because there's only four beds coming up. And unfortunately, our CEO <laughs> is going to have to sleep on the couch. Fortunately, unfortunately, I ain't a day. My word is my word. We drew out the hat. That was actually my idea. I am spewing, but I'm a man of my word. So, look, at the end of the day, leaders in last. <laughs> Oh, 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 fuck, it's gone. Ah, fuck, it's gone, bro. Ah, oh, oh. Yeah, Riverina. We made it to Riverina. Hammy. What do we got here, lad? But we got um, straight up carbon, man. Pure waka from Fiji. Oh, from Fiji? From Fiji. <laughs> what are these, bro? What are these coconuts? Uh, these are uh, coconut shells, man. Run them down. Yeah, we're gonna have a carbon session. Sit around. Well, well boys. Well, boys. Let's go. Let's go. Hey, right. if you start seeing the bits of leprechauns, it's okay. It's very earthy. Well, well up, boys. Well, well up, well up. Ah. Stop with the other side. Hey bro, my tongue's gone now. Now I'm ready? Thanks, now you made it good. Well, boys. Well up. Well, boys. Well up. Well up. Well up. Well up. Well up. Well up. Lad, what are you cooking? To accompany our Fijian cover, we are accompanied with some Fijian chicken curry. We're back, guys. Back at Riverina for the final day on a Saturday. Yeah, we love these kids. Guys, we're doing a little Chris Kringle, me and the Confit team for. Christmas. Cheers, boys. Cheers to congratulations. Merry Christmas. And to us. us. Alright, guys, so we did a Chris Kringle. <laughs> so this is Joe. Um, I want you to read it, actually. Read Merry out. Christmas for being a party pooper. It's <laughs> 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 not fucking pooping. Hello, <laughs> 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 the dog.
Bust plug. 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 Bust Oh, he actually got me something cracker. Oh, you got the balls, baby. That's what he said, man. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is for you, brother, because I know you love Santa. It would be nice to daddy Santa. <laughs> Context: This bloke has been calling himself Daddy <laughs> for the last two, three days. Four this is gonna unharm you. All right, so everyone, I guess, say something we did good as a group. It was last minute, but for us to be able to sit down and in that short space of time come up with M Top Last Seat, that was fucking genius. You know, it's official now. Gentlemen's code is official. Yeah, gentlemen's Thanks to Ruby. Yeah. There's so much power when everyone is cross trained in different roles. Because what happens is you can carry, you can carry counterweight battles and you can carry each other. Boys, right? cheers. Cheers, boys. And you've done it. You're done, no, bud. You're done, you no. Know. Alright, guys, so I got a new watch from Wilder Has. Oh, very nice. Oh, yeah. Very nice. Good morning, guys. I was supposed to end my vlog last night when I got home, but I was just so tired. I crashed out as soon as I got home, and then I was just, as soon as I got up, I started working and then went back to bed. So yeah, but it was a really good week at Wagga Wagga uh, with the boys. Some really funny things happened. But yeah, I mean, it doesn't really matter where you are in the world, as long as you've got good boys around you, it's always gonna be a good time, I guess. And you know, we're there for good purpose. Um, even inside the juvies, we had good boys at, ju at the juvies. You know, a lot of valuable lessons. One of the officers asked us to add like, something in our, one of our talks to talk about um, respect and respect for women. They hear a lot of the conversations that they go on between their girlfriends and their partners and whatever. And um, because they can overhear the conversations, they can listen in on the phone conversations because, you know, Intel. So they asked us to you know, maybe try to teach them guys, you know, how to respect their, their partners, you know, don't call them hoes or whatever, get angry on the phone, controlling their anger. So yeah, we added that into the curriculum called the gentleman's code. Anyways, guys, my arm's getting really sore from holding my phone and talking into it. So signing out, guys. It's been a very tiring week for me, but I'm still working and it's a new week now. So, enjoy guys, uh, coming up to Christmas, a lot of things happening again. By the way guys, if you haven't seen it, a one out training basketball singlet, hit me up guys if you want one, I only got 20, so send me a DM. Signing out guys, see you later, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, I'd really appreciate it. Get me up to 250, on the way to 1k. Top G, not Bugatti, mm, we are tipping at the party, cool bro, I get like the message you want.